Welcome, folks. I am Jabby Kawai, joined by Steph Sabra. Hello. We are in our new space. This is supposed to be our main space. I don't know when this video is coming out, so it's like it's our first video in this space, but it might come out like in two or three weeks after we've shot several videos here. You guys, we are watching Bullet Train. Thanks so much for joining us. I have been anxious to watch this film. If you guys haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications, and pretty please vote this up. Let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. And that's if you're watching this on YouTube, which also means you're seeing a cut down version of our reaction because we can only show you a limited amount of picture in picture. But if you want to watch the whole thing with us, no cuts, no interruptions, no compromises, you got to go to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash or become a member of this channel so you can watch the whole thing with us, but you will need your own copy of the film. We are watching this through Netflix, so you can open up the movie in an adjacent window to our reaction. We'll give you a 3 to one countdown sync, and it'll be like you're watching it with two of your favorite pals from the internet. My mouth is dry. I can't do the... <laughs> <laughs> He's parched. This almost feels like John John Wick in a way at the beginning. Yeah. Oh, never mind. Oh, I love him. The father. He's in Warrior. I need to watch that still. Yeah, you totally do. Ever since the last time, right? This dude has been like the go-to Japanese guy. Yeah, he's. He's goaded in the Japanese world. What the heck? <laughs> Transition. Oh, I see what you're doing. Ladybug's supposed to be lucky. Ha. Ah. You don't have bad luck. Really? My bad luck is biblical. I'm not going to people. Carver, what an ego. <laughs> Take the gun. Keep going against Uh oh. Is that Hero from uh, Heroes? Okay, I'm gone. Well, that's a start. Hey, this is nice. Yeah. Oh, come on, Nick. No, I just don't have to make the best of this stress, master. Oh, no. You're all right. I need to talk to someone. Serious. A goldfish biscuit. I mean, I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> Yeah. I feel like that's too easy. They're not just gonna tell you where they are. I could be wrong, but I think like having a gun in Japan is a very, very rare thing. Yeah. Oh, you messed up. Yeah, no fucking way I'm gonna find one brief. Wait. What? Try to stick around the hand. Yeah? Holy shit, box. <laughs> what is important are the 17 dead bodies we left getting you back from the triad that kidnapped you with the plans to ransom you to your extremely psychotic, fucked up father? Actually, it's 16. 16 kills, mate. Oh, no, it was 17. It's 16. Seven, you're starting to get on my fucking tits. 16. I'll smash my fucking head through a brick wall. Maybe that'll help your memory, because The fuck is wrong with you, man? It was 17, goddammit. I want to fucking strangle you. Do you mind if we do this right now? Don't worry Sorry. about it, man. And forever born. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. One. Two and three. They fly so high. Five guys playing poker. Oh my. Yeah. Free assholes with swords. Ah! Fucking get it. Why do you want me? I'm going to look at this. Oh yeah. my Looks like a front for a Jaffa cake. How about a wagon wheel? Oh, that works. Was cool. <laughs> he doesn't need a reason to kill people like you. He needs a reason not to. Does he have one? His tattoo. 
That's fucking confusing. Hello? Do you have white dead son? What, you mean this dickhead with the silly face tattoos? Yeah, he sat right here. And the briefcase? Yes, of course I've got the case. You will both be bored at Kyoto's... <laughs> Thing you'd see is luggage fire. <laughs> we need to find the person who took that case. Maybe you're right. Maybe my luck is starting. Uh oh. Oh, it's bad, Bunny. <laughs> the prince? Is that what it said? Mm hmm. I want you to go in there and kill. I'm sorry, what's your boy's name again? Wataru. Right. Right. Kill Wataru. <laughs> She's diabolical. Yeah. He wants my name and he gets you off the face of the earth in one single night. May the empire worthy of the white death. You know that he had a wife. Well, he had a wife? Yes, she was the most important fucking thing in his life, and she died. Drunk driving accident or some shit. And now he's at the compound, he ain't left since. Well, he asked for the best. He asked for the two responsible for the Bolivia job. <laughs> oh, my God. First his wife, now his son. That's a lot of white deaths. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, what a shot. Yeah, that was cool. Fun Joshua tree. Oh no. Oh my oh, god. No. Encuéntrame al hijo de puta que hizo esto. Oh, that just becomes his outfit. <laughs> you stab me? Kill my wife. But I'm gonna say, Queen Matos Paros to Tiro. Nice flare, the flipping of the case. I will find you. Why? I will ruin your life the way you ruin mine. Dude, I don't even know you. Hey. Oh shit! Oh my god! Mi corazón. Oh my! If the knife didn't get him. Should take that knife. Good whiskey. Huh? Made in my mama glasses. What the fuck is in my mama? This is such a weird movie. <laughs> the tone is so bizarre. <laughs> it did look like it was Brad Pitt who bumped into him at the wedding. Sorry, buddy. Go ahead, 
<laughs> That's fun. How did you know that was there? <laughs> Didn't I mention? I've always been lucky. It was then that I took a long, hard look into the mirror. And you know what? Buddy, I didn't like what I saw. Nope. Not a... <laughs> Hoping the white death is so busy cutting off our arms instead of cutting off our fingers. It's like Thomas the Tank Engine always says, simple is better. The kid show? Yes, the f***ing kid. I learned everything about people from Thomas. Everything. Really? That's how I can read people like you so well, and you huh. are Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> Funny character Brad Pitt's playing. He's the worst at hiding stuff. The worst. Bald, I believe it's the son of the White Death. Did the twins ID you? Did you hear what I said? White Death. 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 I'm like MacGyver. Oh my god, no, absolutely not. Yeah. Nope. No. Oh. oh, so they put the venom in that. Picture it. Picture what? I wonder how he'll do it. Maybe a pillow to the face. Maybe something clever. No, no, you hold on to it. Why did you hold Be honest. Who's the one who's with you? 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 We're not finished. You're going to sit here and you're going to go through every combination until you open up that case. Kid, that could take. No, no, it won't. Where's your twin? Tangerine. I'm Tangerine. Lemon's keeping the case safe. And the white dead son? Yeah, he's there. He's a fucking happy chappy, isn't he? <laughs> but uh, I've got to pop on the train, you know, 10 seconds left, so it's all right. We'll stick to the plan, depart in Kyoto. Do us a favour, get the fuck off my back, will ya? I love his suit. <laughs> They're all covered in blood. <laughs> Shoot first. Come up with the answers later. Great advice. We haven't actually seen what's in the briefcase yet. Mm -mm. Ew. God, she is bad. I am doing the same thing that I did to the gun in your hand. I'm just making things interesting. Did you know that there have been 31 attempts on the White Death's life from within his own organization? Each one he executed with their own weapon. Do you see what I'm getting at here? You see what I did there? You're really proud of yourself, aren't you? Jeez, they're usually so polite here. Lady, I'm so... 
Oh, that's cool. <laughs> You know what? Do you have um, anything sparkling with bubbles? Yeah. Oh, I, was she in the boys? Yes. I think that's right. I don't know. Kill the chick. Yeah, where the fuck is he then? He's on this train. Well, that narrows it down then, Danny. Oh. <laughs> Madison just stopped the train. Whoa. Yikes. You probably ought to get that. It could be important. <laughs> yeah, what you want? The way this is to get off at next stop, holding the briefcase or he will kill everyone on that train. Okay, yeah, I can make it, but uh, Lemony's a little tied up right now. Both of you this time, with the case, or everyone dies. They even know what Lemon looks like. Wow. You two do look like twins. Huh? Oh, that's funny. Have you opened the case? Nah, of course not. Do you know what? I never asked for the combination. You know what I mean? Keep it safe that way. Yeah. So no one gets greedy. <laughs> <laughs> The like bad luck storyline of him is so good. What was that? Why do you even bother trying? I was trying to sell it. I, well, I don't think it. they were in the market for fucking dildos and panties. Ah, they? but they were buying it. They were. Oh, I had them. <laughs> Within that wall is a door. I'm finding it very hard to follow the story. My point is that door is closed. <laughs> <laughs> this man, he kidnapped me and he said that he's going to hold me for ransom. Common sense tells me that this old shaky geezer here is the one in charge, but I'm really good at reading people and something tells me you are just not right. Yeah. <laughs> so, let's see here. I mean, I can't... Stop. One. Well, if I don't answer this phone, you call. Two. Kill what I do. Three. Am I dreaming? I thought he was gonna fall asleep before killing anybody. Yeah, me too. I got to you stay right there. Everyone knows they What a stunt. Oh. Damn. He's gone. Tangerine is gone. Oh. So you came to kill a hornet. I don't know. I was waiting for something like that to happen. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. Hey, bitch. One little prick from this, you know what happens? Yes. Your blood congeals, clogging your veins. You bleed on your fucking I said yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By who? I don't know. It was all a lie. They said my money was in the case. That is dumb. Stop. 
The hornet stings, bitch! Lady, you can have the case. Oh, but you've seen my face, bitch. <gasps> oh, but it didn't it didn't push. Oh 30 seconds before the venom does its thing. Shit, man, do you have a backup? What do you think? <laughs> oh. you don't have another one? You gotta be better prepared. <laughs> I'm mansplaining, I'm mansplaining again, I'm sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> Yikes. The irony, man. Wait a second. Hmm. Doesn't he have a bulletproof vest? Didn't he say he didn't wear one, though? Oh, he said he doesn't wear one? Yeah. Oh, I thought he said... Okay. I must have misheard then. Well, that's he a doing, cool shot. Is he doing a real meditation thing? I don't know. Get off or do what the f*** you like. You're free to go. Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank it's all right. Go on. Take, yeah, I don't know what you're doing here anyway. He was right. There's been a diesel. Is she finally gonna die? And it was you the whole fucking time, you dirty little diesel! You made lemon bleed. And lemon never bleeds. Oh my god, man! What are you doing, you felon? Oh my god. No way. Oh, Yikes! He said that he's going to kill you and blame everything on you. He also said that there's someone waiting for us at Kyoto Station. Someone scary who would hurt me. Oh, God. Leave it! Let's go! Yeah. Let's go! We gotta go! No, I can't! Right now, young lady! No! No, 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 no! Please come back! Oh, kid, please. No, don't. Let's just move. Grab your bag. Oh no. Was that a snake? Would you know where my son is? But he has the antidote in his system, right? I think so. He was going to help me kill the White Death at Kyoto Station. But he couldn't even do that. So he's dead. They are both dead. My grandson was pushed off a roof. What makes you think I would leave him unprotected? Yeah. I was wondering about that earlier when we when she walked by. She walked by earlier and I was like, oh, I bet she's dangerous. I'll fucking kill him myself. <sighs> Steak, do not open. <laughs> <laughs> so random. I'm going to tell you a story now. No, I'm good. It's short. Really, I'm fine. No. It's very quick. No, no, no. It's a good story for you, I think. I'm cool. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I asked Minegishi not to trust this man. Minegishi told me I had lost my appetite. He was not wrong, but neither was I. Damn. Do you know what they call a ladybug in Japan? Mm. Tentomushi. 
as a boy, I was told there is a spot on his back for each of the seven souls. You see, Tentomish is not lucky. It holds all the bad luck so that others may live in peace. Oh. <laughs> you shot me. Mm, me too. Twice. Still, he had an <laughs> I told you! He's got a bulletproof vest on! What? I told you! He's but he said he wasn't! I told you! I was like, he's not dead! He's. Oh, you drank the water. What a f, my brother. It's like Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> so yeah. You killed my brother. You killed my brother. You piece of shit. Hey, you what you, you f shot me. Hey. I'll shoot you in the f next hey. time. Hey, you hey. f hey. Kira Knight. Hey. Hey. You, <laughs> you I should have put a bullet through your fucking eyes. When you point a finger at someone in blame, there are four fingers pointing back at you. Three. That's weird. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Get off me! A plum does not resent the hungry man, but the farmer who planted the tree. Oh, God. <laughs> we prepare together, or we die alone. That's all I was trying to say. Technically, his brother shot himself. Yeah. Killers from all countries. But he has no idea. My son and I are on this train. I'll go to the driver car and get us the f out of here. <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> I was like, who's this actor whose face they're hiding right. in the whole movie? Deutschke. Not yet. Hey, uh, fellas, I'm looking for Mr. Death. Got his case here. Hey, easy. Oh. Hurt people, hurt people. <laughs> <laughs> Ради того, чтобы стоять и пепер это мой. С пальцем на курке. Это я. Я заслуживала твоё внимание. Ah, sense makes. Больше похоже на тебя, чем лица Цезаранец, когда либо был. I came here to kill you. So kill me. Fucking do it! Uh, good news is I have your case. Hey, good news. Good news. <laughs> the shadow buyer um, who bought all our contracts got us all on this, this train. I, me? The Hornet. The tangerine, lemon. Why do you do what you do? You know, I've been asking that very question. If it's so safe, why didn't he just open it? What if it's a bomb and it blows up in our faces? You think these <laughs> stupid masks are gonna protect us? <laughs> you never get dialogue like that. <laughs> the henchman? Yeah. It was an assassination attempt on me, but fate. It was my wife in the car that night, not me. Fate put my wife in the hospital, a piece of her rib piercing her heart. Had your own kid killed? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yes, I did. A piece of shit. That night, I told her not to leave to wait for me but she promised 
It was the last time we would ever bail him out of trouble. I will come. I will always come for you. Well, she taught me a valuable lesson. If you do not control your fate, it will control you. Hmm. Hmm? So I took control. I brought them all here to die. But now there is only one left. Mr. Carver. Fuck Carver. The man who murdered my wife. Oh my god, are you for real? <laughs> oh my god. Bro, just open it. Fine. You happy? I'm not Carver. Ooh, that's sick. Yikes. Get him. <laughs> this music is amazing. So good. <laughs> Damn. Oh. Wow. Nice. Get him. He's like, who's the last M right now, Tom Cruise? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Yucky, yucky. Oh, nice. Aido. What? Whoa! Oh my god! Holy sh! Wow! Oh my god. Hold on! We're on the wrong track! I wonder if there was like a physics simulation that was done to figure this out. Yeah. Or if they're just like, ah, that's what happens. <laughs> Strength. You're ruled by fear. Fear of the one thing deep down you cannot they can, control. How do you get out of the sword situation? Uh, yeah. But I got another brother now. Really? <laughs> oh. Well, that was the best way to go, yeah. I guess. Oh. Fuck it. Oh. God. Uh, oh. 
Not again. Oh, how did that survive? Ugh. Oh, come on. Just let it go, bro. Full out, call me, bro. Okay. Holy shit. <laughs> no, I am. Okay, wait, wait, wait. What? You need some suggested reading, if I may. Surviving borderline personality disorder. What? Highly recommend. What? Tangerines. <laughs> Is that karma? Well, well. Tento mushi. What's that karma? Wow. Sandra Bullock. No. You're right. You are the greatest, most wonderful handler that I could ever have. Mm. Ever. Ever. Mm. Do you think maybe there was a little head trauma? Maybe. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Need a banana? Next time, take the gun. Don't listen to Barry. Okay? Simple. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> nice car. Yes, it is. Try not to bleed on it. How do you know it's a bad thing? Huh? Really? See what I'm doing? <laughs> I do. Turning that upside down. I do. <laughs> this is working. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Tangerines. Oh. Final curtain, huh? Final curtain. Take a fucking bow. I like that a lot. I just thought it was long. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was like, this. This could be a shorter movie. I thought it was really fun. Yeah. I love the tone of it. It's. I. I was expecting. I didn't know what it was going to be like. I've seen movies where there's one setting, like Train to Busan, or mm -hmm. the other Bong Joon Ho film that they made a show about. Yes, yeah, Snowpiercer. Yeah. I liked how this is like a totally like sarcastic, sardonic, twisted version of that. I love the character work. I thought each of the characters, like if you read their descriptions. I, as an actor, I can imagine being like, oh, hell yes. This yeah. seems so fun. I just love the tone, but I, I do think it was a little long, but it was fun. That was the main thing. I was like, well, we're still going here. Like, we're just getting started yeah. on some of this, on some of these story beats. I'm like, holy crap. You have all these characters that are well-defined and they each have their own like roadmaps that they're following. Mm -hmm. And you and you can see that. So for me, it, it felt kind of like Snatch on a train with martial arts, mm. if that makes any sense. Because mm -hmm. you have all these different characters that are all vying for something at once. And it's like, instead of a diamond, it's the briefcase full of money and gold, so to speak. Like, that's at the center of it. But then it, it's even bigger than that because there are vendettas in place. That was something that I guess Snatch didn't quite have. That made this very, very interesting. Also, Brad Pitt. His character was so much fun. He had so many interesting character moments, one-liners, and just the little things. It's like, I remember, um, what was it? Oh, goodness. I forgot what it's. Burn After Reading, I think is what it was called. If you haven't seen the movie yet, I'm about to give something away. His part was quite small because he dies early in the movie. I remember when he was being held at gunpoint over a bicycle, it was like the guy holding him at gunpoint thought it was a particular kind of brand. And Brad Pitt's character laughs like, you think it's that brand? Like, the way he laughs at it, he has this way of taking these real things and injecting it into these moments where it's like, why would you do it there? You know, like he's in the middle of this conflict of life or death and he's po he's got the finger analogy and he's like wait a second that's weird because he messed it up and it just feels very real in the way that like any one of us might mess up because I'm always like self-conscious about like potentially messing up a phrase or how you're supposed to use a word and then I'll sit and think about it for a second there's like this awkwardness in my brain and his character just externalizes that, right, that awkwardness. Right. I thought that his character was like one of my favorite types of characters I've seen on screen where mm. what I thought the script was so well done in terms of like 
like using what it had like with his character you have like the luck thing and being mm -hmm. unlucky and then you intertwine that into everyone's storyline and then just with the train itself they made it where they up the antics like with the one minute to exit and mm -hmm. enter mm -hmm. and then there was the quiet zone and right. then there was like the just like a few different things like that that just added so much to it so even though we were only on the train the whole time it felt like there was a lot to lose yeah they did a good job of varying the different carts so that it didn't feel like one location it felt like a, a variety of locations because like you had the bar then you had this the the I don't know, that anime kind of with the, the girl inside of the costume. And then you had the, the the train that we started with that was more normal and I guess formal looking. I guess it's because it's different classes. But all of it felt so varied that it, felt, you know, it didn't feel like one spot, even mm -hmm. though it kind of was. But it still felt very, very epic. Like all things, especially with that ending. It's like the effects were bananas. I really wonder what the budget was on this. Right. Because it felt like a, a much bigger budget film than I was anticipating. And the cameos were also cool. The cameos are great. I love Zazie B. It's Bad Bunny. That's funny to see like an mm -hmm. artist actually. And he was actually really good. I love that montage of him. Mm -hmm. I thought that was well done. I love those little cutouts that they did. I think that was like stylistically unique and well done. Well, as far as like the fight scenes go, that's like something I paid a lot of attention mm -hmm. to, obviously. There's a lot of combat going on. The first two that were there, I thought were, were quite good. Especially the one between him and the Mexican guy in that train. Like, the way they were using the briefcase and the way Brad Pitt was like, he was he had this flair with it that he would twirl it around in, the, in between everything. But the thing that was neat about it, even though he's in this dire conflict and the fight is intense, he's still maintaining how his character would move and behave. He's kind of running away and he's got the briefcase over his head. Like, he's, he's deadly, but he's amusing to watch in a very Jackie Chan-esque kind of way. And so the second fight that was really cool where they're in the quiet section. It was a very obviously Jackie Chan moment where uh, Brad Pitt gets kicked in the shin and he goes, ooh, and he like rubs his shin really quickly. That's straight out of a movie called Who Am I? Oh, that's fun. Where Jackie Chan and this guy are kicking each other's shins and then they both start rubbing their shins and going, oh, shit. That's really you know, funny. It's, it's a very Jackie Chan thing yeah. in general. And I thought that was cool, a cool way to approach this character. It's like he's in the middle of this life and death situation, but he keeps trying to zen out and find philosophy in each moment and have an opportunity to have dialogue and close the gap between him and his enemy. He's like, no, this is it's a, there's a wall and there's a window for opportunity. Right, you know? like, right. I thought all that stuff was really cool. You know, it, it makes him a very different and likable character. Totally. From the beginning, his first line to his last line, you're like, this character rocks. I mean, for a two hour journey, he's just fun to be around. Right. And the funniest thing is whenever we moved away from him, I missed him. Mm -hmm. You know, I just wanted to be around around him again. Not that the other characters were not interesting. I thought they were all well-defined. It was just like, oh, I miss Brad Pitt's character. Let's, let's go hang out with him again. He's just so much fun to be around. Yeah. I mean, for the movie, you know? Yeah. The third fight scene, one with the English guy, I forgot his name, who played... Um, Tangerine, tangerine. Or, or so the spot with the food that fight scene was kind of messy to me it wasn't as nice as, okay. the, as the other two like there was a, there was an artistry and a creativity to the other two fight scenes that I thought was super cool and I felt like it was kind of lost in that third one maybe because the actor uh, fighting Brad Pitt was not as equipped mm. and so they had to sort of like get in coverage, you know, like close-ups and fast cuts and stuff like that to make up for his otherwise, you know, missing skill. And then the other one was the sword fight scene with Last Samurai Guy and uh, I forgot the name of the actor from who plays Zod, Michael something. Oh, right? I know, My, I don't. It's Michael something, I'm sure of it. That sword fight scene, I was like, the emotional conflict there was quite interesting and I liked the stakes. It was that the choreography didn't lead, live up to the emotional conflict mm. for me. It was just like, I was expecting like something super cool with all that has been built up because you have all this super cool, well-defined characters and this backstory and whatnot with the Yakuza and how this Russian guy right, rose through the ranks. He was shown to be a crazy badass in that flashback. I want to see that. I know he's, he's older, first off, and the actor is not a martial artist. I get it. There was a lot that was like, you know what I mean? It was built yeah. up. And, and then for the buildup, I was like, okay, the emotional payoff was strong. And there were some cool surprises, like when uh, the English actor, I forgot his name. I think he played Kick-Ass. He was also in Godzilla, if I'm not mistaken. Quicksilver, too. I think yes, he that's right. That's yeah. right. I love that moment when he passes the girl and he sees the sticker and he sees yeah. that she's a diesel. I thought that was a cool moment. And then you find out that Fastos is still alive, like the Romeo and Juliet sort of thing. With totally. The, I thought that was neat. The bonding and the dialogue, all that stuff was cool. I thought, I thought the the only thing that was a little bit much for me, I think if it was trimmed, it could have made the movie a little shorter. Was and I know you're probably going to disagree with me. I just wish that the there was a little bit less dialogue between Lemon and Tangerine. Mm. I just it's like after a while I'm like. 
I've seen Snatch. It was better in Snatch. Hmm. That's that was the feeling I was sort of sort of getting. I don't know if I'm the only one, but when you've established someone as so as, as fun to be around as Brad Pitt, and then you're giving me this dialogue that is a copycat of Snatch, it's what it feels like. Let's just go back to Brad Pitt. Like he was so much fun to be around. Yeah. You know what I mean? That was what I was getting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I I love the dialogue. I love the dialogue in general between yeah. them. I thought where it could have been trimmed is like between the back and forth of like all the suitcase work. There could have been like three scenes trimmed out. Okay, which ones? I don't know exactly, but I just feel like it's hard to say because I loved Zazie Beat's character in there and and Bad Bunnies, but it's mm. like, were they really needed? You had to know that the lady inside of the costume or uh, was something. Was an assassin. Right, like, right. you just had to know right. that, right? Like, because I saw that and I'm like, there's something up with that character that's not there on, on accident. She was trying to hold onto the case. So I was like, okay, there's something there. Yeah. I like the the Mexican standoff with, like, it fell in Brad Pitt's hand. Right. And he took it and he, he jabbed her with it. And he was, like, waiting for her to grab the, the EpiPen or whatever it's called, the antidote. <laughs> like, the timing of it before he shoved it in his own throat. Like, I like that stuff. I thought it was super creative, like, the way they handled a lot of things. Me too. You know? It was just long. It was just long. Yeah. But they probably, like, saw every scene and were like, God, it's just so fun. If you watched every scene alone... I would say they're all solid scenes. Yeah. And then it's just in continuum. Like, that's hard to trim the fat there. When you're trying to have a fun action film with characters that you can easily understand, we have films where characters just show up and they're badasses, and they're, but you don't know anything about them. Yeah. Whereas here, you know something about everybody involved. Yeah. I guess the, the byproduct of that is the film then ends up feeling longer. I don't know what they could have done differently to make it not feel like, oh God, we're still here. I'd have to sit and think about yeah. it for a while and let the movie, like, simmer and my brain for a bit or watch it again because there is something like that is missing in the film where you just start to feel a little bit exhausted and I'm not sure exactly why. Maybe it's because the style just sort of wears you down after a while. But I do like the style. It's weird. It can be seen as a negative or a positive. It's kind of like your Brad Pitt's character being like, oh, shit. Yeah. Again? Yeah, true. And so it kind of puts you into that mode where you're like, damn, I really feel you. Like you yeah. keep being drawn back into it when you think you're almost done. I think you might be onto something with the Zazie beat. It's prolonging the time until the epic third act of the movie, mm -hmm. which itself is very big and involved. Overall, I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. I thought the action was great. And it's like better action than you get in most action movies. You know, even with the stuff that I didn't like as much, I think it's still better than a lot of what you get in general. Yeah. And I love the... I mean, every, anytime you film something in Japan, I'm like, I want to go. It's such a pretty sight. Yeah. You know, when, when I was watching the commercials, I was a little concerned about lack of Asian characters in a movie set in Japan. Yeah. And while watching it, I was like, I guess they covered their bases. I mean, they did have focal characters that were Japanese. Yeah. And so. I think part of it was like playing on the fact, like the White Death is kind of a funny character. It's like you and all of his minions, like you guys are not Japanese. You're mm -hmm. in Japanese masks trying to be like the Yakuza. And it's, yeah. it's like kind of ironic, but everyone's scared of them. It's like, you guys are super appropriating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was that one moment that I thought was interesting where you had the two guys who were like, why doesn't he open the case? Why is he making us oh, do yeah. it? Oh yeah. Uh, that was cool because it was another, yet another thing to make the movie longer. It was a dialogue that we never see. It's like you always have these henchmen in movies who are just following orders who are, who are they're not interesting because you don't know anything about, like, you don't hear them talk. It's just, they're nothing. They're literally just... Muscle. Uh, uh, yeah, they're just muscle. They're uh, cannon fodder, mm -hmm. right? Whereas here, you actually get to hear them talk and think and, like, is this the right move? And it's like, you don't you don't know their names. You don't know who they are, but it's an interesting moment. Yeah. You know? Yeah, totally. So, I like that touch. Yeah, and it almost made me wish that this was, even though it's one location, it almost made me wish that this was, like, a mini series on HBO as opposed to a movie. Because it's, like, mm. that, that exhausted feeling... Maybe it's a byproduct of us just being in this generation of watching cinematic television. And so we're used to it being broken up. Yeah. But I wonder if like you could have gotten everything that was on the cutting room floor and had like a four episode thing for HBO yeah. Max. That could you know? be fun. Totally. It, yeah. I know TV's made me change the way I view movies. Like It's like we can't help it. Yeah. I appreciated all the surprises, the twists and turns. Style. The like the visual style of it was so cool. We're watching this on an OLED TV that might be helping, but it just popped, you know, the saturated colors and the contrast I thought all of that was really nice kind of had a Quentin Tarantino vibe like the music mixed with the yeah yeah uh, yes the soundtrack was definitely interesting and the mixture of uh, or cutting things to music or just finding interesting yeah. tracks to underscore things in an ironic
organic way, I guess, kind of like Tarantino. Him and Scorsese are the ones that, that really, really uh, push that. Anyways, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Do subscribe, bell icon, all notifications. Pretty please vote this up. Let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. If you're watching this on Patreon or memberships, thanks so much for supporting us here. I'm Jabby Koei. This is Steph Sabra. Peace out.